Hello everyone at Cote de Neige. Uh, my name is Enoch Lee and I am currently doing my final year of my MDiv studies at Presbyterian College. Uh, at my request, I was assigned to your church so that I can work more closely with you throughout my final year uh, so that I can learn from your ministry and so that I can learn from the people that are involved in this church. Um, I want to do a short introduction video for you to share a bit about my faith journey and about my family and what I'm hoping to achieve in my final year here. And uh, hopefully I will get to see you in person soon and uh, interact with you more. So here we go. Uh, I am married. Uh, my wife's name is Pamela. She is a psychotherapist therapist by training, but ever since uh, she was pregnant with her first son, our first miracle, Noah, um, she's uh, dedicated herself to being a stay-at-home mom. Um, we call him the little miracle because um, we had a lot of losses and we're losing a lot of hope, but in the midst of that, we continue to ask people for prayer. We continue to trust that God had good plans for us and finally, Noah came and he was our first little miracle. He's now two years old already. And our youngest son, uh, our second miracle, Jimmy, James, uh, is now one years old. So those two being at home during the pandemic uh, has really, really kept our family lively, busy and chaotic at times, uh, but uh, full of joy and full of uh, good memories. So that's a little bit about my family. Um, I came to Canada with my parents. I'm an only child at the age of nine from South Korea to Winnipeg, out of all places, in the dead of winter. Um, and we emigrated here. Uh, my dad had the intention of studying theology in, in a Western context uh, in hopes that it would stretch him and grow him. Um, but shortly after arriving here and um, studying at the University of Winnipeg, he discovered that, uh, that it wasn't a fruitful place to be in terms of studying theology. Uh, so he took up a assistant minister position in Toronto. So we moved to Toronto and Tor all throughout my uh, teenage years and high school, I grew up in Toronto attending my father's church. My father was a uh, ordained Presbyterian pastor. Um, here in Canada, he was part of the Korean Presbyterian Church Abroad denomination, which is a North American denomination composed of, um, I think several hundred congregations in North America. Um, and he pastored, I would say mostly in Toronto, uh, where he stayed for nine years and he's moved on to a few other uh, churches that really he felt really called to smaller congregations. So I grew up in the church. This is where sort of my story about faith journey begins. I grew up in the church and as a pastor's son, as a pastor's kid, um, I had to sort of attend every service Wednesday night service, you know, Friday night prayer service, sometimes early morning prayer services, you know, any conference that the youth pastor wanted to take us or going out on outreach or anything like that. It was sort of all mandatory. I was, for the most part, glad to be a part of that because I, I believed I was born again and I was, you know, a strong Christian. And, um, I grew up thinking that, you know, that's, this is what that was, uh, this uh, life of a Christian. But I knew um, deep inside, somewhere inside, there was a bit of a doubt about my salvation, about what the Christian life looks like. And I, I, I remember distinctly feeling somewhat powerless that my life wasn't really changing in God and that this probably wasn't what God was talking about from what I could gather from all the sermons that I listened to at church. So I remember that at all these conferences, at all these uh, mission trips uh, that I went to, I remember having a lot of these emotional moments where I rededicated my heart to God because I really felt 
um, convicted in my heart that I wasn't living my life for God. So I, I had these periodical rededications of my life to God in, in an attempt to fully live for God. But that would only last so long. And um, one of the struggles that I had all throughout high school from grade 8 to grade 12 was an addiction to computer gaming. Uh, nowadays, it's so common in boys and even girls and pretty much uh, all ages that people tend to think not much about it. But um, I knew it was a serious problem because uh, for about five years, I, I must have spent on, an, on average, even on a school night, six hours gaming. And you may wonder, well, how is that even possible? Didn't your parents try to stop you or, you know, get you back on the right track? Well, um, my parents, you see, were very absent in my life because they were so dedicated to the pastoral care of congregation. And so they were often out in the evenings visiting, um, were often not really present or active in parenting me and my dad really believed that one day I would grow the right muscles in my willpower to be able to self-regulate but I was already deep in that addiction and I, there was no hope of getting out on my own strength so for five years I struggled and uh, it really consumed my life and I knew in my heart that this is not the life that God had wanted from me and fasting for, fast forwarding to the age of 18 is when I personally had an encounter with God in a way that I could not deny I was forever changed from that experience. And what happened was I graduated from high school and I took some time off from school. And it so happens during that time, God ignited a renewed interest and a desire to want to know Him once and for all for and to experience him in my life in a real way that made an impact a lasting impact not a cyclical rededication of myself and so i just did what i could what i thought um what i knew i i could do i just tried really hard to seek god in every way that the church had taught me through prayer through attending services through listening messages uh, but really my heart was positioned to seek God and I was just seeking and seeking and asking God I don't I want to believe you and I want to know you as my own personal Savior not the God that my parents serve not the God of anyone else but my my God I want to make that personal confession without any reservations that I was truly making that commitment and in the midst of that God really answered um, in the form of a cassette tape that I received from my mom who handed it to me before uh, my dad and her went out to do a pastoral visit she said it's a really good message from a, a, a pastor in Korea uh, that's very powerful I think you should hear it and and because I was seeking honestly I, I really was looking forward and I put that cassette tape in my cassette player, put my little headphones on and sat in my bedroom as I listened to this testimony slash sermon from a Korean pastor. And as he began to preach about faith, he began to preach about real faith in the world and as opposed to imposters and fakes that are out there and as he kept driving that point home my heart kept kept pounding faster and faster as if it was the me a message directed right at me and there came to a point where god revealed to me in a supernatural way where this wasn't a head knowledge that you know that i was just trying to um assimilate biblical knowledge god just really came into that room and he was present with me and he showed me that i was a sinner that was the first step and 
it's such a powerful experience when God shows you who you are, someone in need of redemption, because it's undeniable. It's not something that I try to convince myself or it's not something that I try to believe and try to conjure up some feelings about how much I need God. God came in my room and convicted me of who I was. And in that moment, he pointed me to Jesus Christ, his son, and said, you are fit for eternal condemnation. But I offer you, my son, Jesus, as your Lord and Savior, if you would believe in him, you will be forgiven and that you will be able to live a life for me. And in that singular moment in my life in the December of 2005, everything that I had believed in about God or everything that I had relied on for my own salvation, all these things, all these um, things that I had told myself that I was a good Christian, that I went to church, that I uh, did outreach, that I um, went on mission trips, um, that I've rededicated my life to God honestly and wholeheartedly, all of those things just melted away before God who declared me a sinner. And it just made me kneel before him and cry out to him for salvation. And he offered it to me and he gave me the gift of faith in that moment. And it, I knew it was something special and different because I, my whole being, my whole soul, experienced that change in me. Um, and looking back, that, that was sort of my conversion experience. That was the turning point in my life from hopelessness and addiction in computer gaming. And from that singular moment when God met with me, he freed me from the grips of addiction. From that very next day, I no longer had any desire to play games. And I had a renewed desire to go back to the Bible and read it for the first time in my life from cover to cover and discover who God is through, through the word and also through personal prayer. And I, so from that moment on, I went through a very, um, an infant stage in my life where God really just um, provided for my every spiritual need because I was such a vulnerable spiritual baby. And he provided me the, the, the word that I needed, the scripture that I needed every time I was struggling with something. And every time I experienced God's provision, I grew in my trust in who he was as my father, a provider for all of my needs, spiritual and physical. And so from that moment on really was the turning point in my life. He gave me a new vision, self-esteem, which I never had growing up in high school, being bullied or, and, and also um, always trying to have a sense of identity and yet not finding it in a, a social environment with my friends. So God gave me a renewed sense of self-esteem. He, he, he helped me to see that even though I had just sort of wasted away five years of my life to an addiction, that it was still not too late to really start to live my life for him. And so from that period, God gave me a renewed sense of um, hope in my life. And he led me to the Royal Military College of Canada. Uh, me out of all people. Uh, he allowed me to get into this institution and be in a structured environment where I would learn a lot of skills that I really lacked in my life. And I graduated from there and I, I, enrolled, uh, I enrolled as an officer in the Canadian Army as an engineering officer. And shortly after that, after my training was done, I was uh, sent to Winnipeg as my first posting to an Air Force base. 
and that is uh, the time during which that I met my wife. Uh, I also served and volunteered in my father's uh, church at that time as well, since he was pastoring in Winnipeg. Um, and I want to say the rest is history, but uh, it's, it's just been a constant journey, um, a constant journey of getting to know who God is. And in the midst of that uh, period in Winnipeg, I went to, on a short-term mission trip to Nicaragua with my church, where we do um, uh, children's ministry, sort of like a VBS, uh, where we host uh, evening revival services for the local pastors and churches, and where we do medical ministry, providing dental care and medical supplies and glasses and uh, vision care and things like that through our volunteer um, staff. And I, I distinctly remember coming back from that trip with a lament in my heart. And that lament was the language barrier. I was just so on fire while I was there, and I was just feeling my own limitations in language as I outdo uh, evangelism through a uh, translator. I just thought, wow, like if I was fluent in Spanish, man, the things that I would, I would say and share to these people. So here I am sitting in my office in, at work in Winnipeg, thinking that I wish I was fluent in Spanish so that I could preach or so that I could share the gospel more effectively to people in Nicaragua. Um, and in my office, as I spent some time in prayer, God shined a light on me. God shined a light on me about my lament about that language barrier and said, what are you doing to reach those around you um, who speak English? And through that time, a light, bulb went, went, um, a light bulb turned on inside of me and God showed me that the path that he had uh, moved me on from joining the military and serving uh, in the army and having that time, uh, time working in the army and learning the culture and all of that, it really was all a preparation for me to then make the transition to become a chaplain because then my calling as a chaplain would be to serve uh, those soldiers and their families first and foremost in their greatest needs and also have the opportunity to share who God is through my actions, through my words. And it was sort of a moment when everything went clear in my head and I knew that this is the new direction that God was all, uh, guiding me on. And so from that point on, I knocked on a lot of doors. I talked to a lot of people, talked to the chaplains that I knew, talked to a lot of the people. How do I change my occupation in the military? Can, is there something, that I, something like that, a sponsorship program that lets me to become a chaplain? And finally, after um, a few years of seeking, I found that process. And then after um, about three to four years of constantly applying, um, and then finding out I, I didn't have one, um, one thing to the next and jumping through some hoops uh, administratively. Um, God was really testing my resolve that, you know, if you're serious about this, you're going to have to keep pursuing it, keep knocking on that door, and keep preparing more in, and hardening, hardening my resolve in becoming a chaplain. And after four years um, of applying, it was God's time when I was at the time I was working in Ottawa and when it's God ta God's time it really is God's time because it's like Paul being liberated from prison the the doors just fling open um, when God opens doors uh, it it just opens a tunnel straight to where I need to go and that's what I experienced that year uh, just all the doors opening right before me that were closed before. And so I knew that God was finally, um, it was God's timing. And so uh, starting 2017, I began my studies at uh, Presbyterian College. And here I am with you in my final year. Um, so 
that being said, um, you can expect that in my final year, um, I will be preaching a little bit. I will be running some workshops. Uh, I will be connecting in the regular uh, life of the congregation, whether it's attending meetings or whether it's uh, volunteering to help clean up or um, whatever is required to be just really part of this community. And uh, some of you have graciously stepped up to become a uh, feedback support for me uh, in my um, formation. So I want to thank you so much for your willingness to do that. But I wanted to close by asking all of you who are willing to connect with me online via email or uh, via other means to just observe who I am and what I do. And if you see something that needs correction, if you see something that needs affirmation, or uh, if you see something that you think could be done differently, then I, I am really open to your suggestions and your feedback because the feedback is what is going to help me to grow and critically reflect on who I am and how I view ministry. So I wanted to ask you for your feedback uh, whenever you see as you see fit and also for your support in um, the things that I'm going to try and initiate and do you know you, if you have the time to participate uh, and if it interests you I hope that you will partake in that um, and most importantly I could really use your prayer uh, for me and my family as I as we navigate through um, this uh, busy season of life if you could help me to have wisdom, to be a husband and a father and a student and a student minister, all those things at once, uh, and to have the right balance in, in, in all of those areas of my life that God's allowed me uh, to be in. So yeah, please keep me in your prayers and please feel free to provide any feedback at, at any point uh, during this year. So um Thank you for listening to this long video. I hope that you found it uh, helpful. If you have any comments, anything like that, you want to send it to me, I will make my contact information uh, available in this video, whether it's email or phone. Uh, you, you can feel free to text me. You can feel free to email me or leave a comment on this video. So thank you again and God bless you.